This is Soy. And this is Daira. And you're listening to Hair Hair and and Whatever. Whatever. Unfiltered Salon Talk. Hey y'all, it's Soy and Daira, and you're listening to Hair and Whatever, Unfiltered Salon Talk. Today we have on the show Kim Strickland. Uh, would you like to tell us a little bit more about Hi. yourself? Hey girl. <laughs> hey girl, hey. Um, well, my name is Kim. I am a um, single mother of an 18-year-old. I love to work out, and that's why my hair is short right now. I literally just bleached it earlier this week. And um, yeah, I work. I work out every day, all day. And I also <laughs> compete good. in fitness shows. So that's it. Okay. That's good. Okay. And um, before we get started, we want to give the hair crown of the week to yes. Curly Sue Official. Curly Sue Official on Instagram. Yes. She has fabulous, like, really big, big, pretty, pretty curly hair. Like, mm. it's awesome. Like, and a great personality, too, from what I saw. Yeah. yeah so she's, she I um, briefly um, met with her, and she has, she really does have, like, a good personality, down mm-hmm. to earth, and... You know, and she's a curly girl. Exactly. So <laughs> shout out to Curly yeah, Sue curly Official. Girl. Right, Curly <laughs> Sue Official. You are our hair, hair crown of the week. And we are gonna be talking about today how you wear your hair when you work out, and we're gonna talk about being a love addict, if if that's even the correct term. Right. Yes, it is. It is. Okay. <laughs> okay. It is. All right. So yeah. So Kim says she works out a whole lot. Yeah. So um, that's one of the questions that, like, a lot of clients have is, you know, how to wear their hair when they work out. They're like, okay, you know, a lot of times they want to wear it straight, but then, you know, they're afraid that they're going to sweat it out. Mm-hmm. So um, how do you like to wear your hair when you work out, Dylan? Honestly, <laughs> I like I honestly leave my hair like this, right? Because I don't I don't really sweat a lot in my head. Mm-hmm. You know, if it bothers me, like you know, my bangs are a little bit too long, then I'll just like put it up in a bun, right? But I just go and you know. So you don't wear like any like head gear, any I like honestly, scars, I, I don't hats. like to. I don't like to because I, I I feel like I don't need it because I'm not sweating in my. That's right. not my thing, you know. Right. But yeah, I just you know. Go to the gym and put my hair in a in a bun. If yeah. that, if not, then it's like this. Right. Yeah. I mean, I guess when you curly, you know, it it's really different. does. It's different. Because you know? my my hair sometimes when I'm like working out and it's, it's like I sweat in, on my so forehead. You have to make it easier when you're curly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then like my curls form again. Right. Because <laughs> right. like, the, because of the what, yeah, sweat. sweat and, yeah. Yeah. The moisture. Right. Moisture Granted, I do shampoo my hair once a week, so it's not like I'm, you know, right, right, yeah, walking out in the streets with dirty hair. <laughs> and that's the thing, like a lot of you know women, you know, they just don't know. Like you know, I feel like um, I feel like everyone is not. You need to kind of go where your lifestyle is right. on how you wear your hair. Because like, like when I lived in New York and I did kickboxing, like I would only um, like I would wear my hair straight often there mm-hmm. and I would put it in a like a bun like up there and I you know I do like a little and like a pineapple in. not a pine yeah like a pineapple here but mm-hmm. it was straight and then like I would roll it up put pins in there mm-hmm. and then like I said I wouldn't sweat a lot so I would be able to kind of like you know just go yeah yeah because everyone doesn't sweat in their hair I know for me like when I'm wearing it straight I would wear my hair like wrapped and it would be fine Right, mm-hmm. you know, and so it yeah. Get so how do you wear your hair when you um, work out? It depends on what I got going on. I and mean, you're I, natural. Yes, hundred <laughs> percent. Since what, nineteen ninety seven? Natural. <laughs> Actually, ninety six. Yeah, ninety six. So yeah, like I go back and forth. It depends. Like if I wear my hair straight. Okay, I don't sweat in my head a lot, and I am working out hard. I'm sore actually right now, and um, I'll just wear it uh, wrapped. And I'll put on like either a hat or I'll put a scarf on and then 
just roll out. And then if I'm curly, natural, then I just... Yeah, just let it go. Mm-hmm. And even with the clippings, like, I have clippings today, and, you know, I could, you know, wrap it, and it'll be fine. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, well, unfortunately, right? <laughs> I sweat really bad in my hair, so... I've gone, my hairstyle have gone through stages. I used to be a aerobics instructor, so I wore a lot of weaves. Mm-hmm. Um, because I did go natural, I had psoriasis in my hair for, head for a while, so I had to stop perming my hair and go natural. Right. And um, with the weave, it was a little easier mm-hmm. because I was able to uh, put the scarf on my head and, you know, I would still be kind of cute at the gym working out or whatever. But then once I decided to stop wearing the weaves and I cut off all my hair, initially I was still natural, mm-hmm. looking right. like a boy, um, sweating all she day, did not. every day. I and just want to say for the record, she did not look yes, like a boy. Yes, I did. No, so didn't. finally I was like, okay, forget this, because I was putting – even though I was wearing it uh, with the rods at the top and different things like that, I, you know, I just needed something where I could just wrap it up once I work out and go. Right. Um, I couldn't do that with the natural hair. It was just too much. So why for me, it, but why I, do you why do you because feel I, like it was? I literally I I sweat where it's coming down my eyes. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. So. Once I got a perm and cut off all my hair, it was were, easier maintenance for me. Okay, so, but you were wearing your hair sh- straight short. No, I was wearing it rotted short. Rotted short. Yes. Okay. So, so never in its natural state. I've worn it in the natural state, but my hair is uh, it's a cur- coarse type thing. Uh, it's not coarse where it won't curl, but it's in between. So when I sweat, I get a boy afro. I'm not curly, cu- cutesy curly. It's like no, trying no, to figure no, it out. No, that's, no, that, that's the no, mentality. Well, you know, that's how I felt. I just wasn't, I didn't feel you comfortable did, okay. walking around with my hair looking because like that. Because I think that your curls were pretty. Well, anyway, so <laughs> I decided to go back to what I know. And, um, and then once I really started competing, it was easier for me because I do wear a scarf on my head Mm -hmm. when I work out, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, with the things that we have to take, like different pre-workouts or whatever, you want to sweat because that's what's going to make you lose the weight. Right. So when I, um, now when I work out, um, I do put um, Nairobi on my hair um, afterwards, but I do wear a scarf. I'm drenched when I'm done. So my hair is soaking wet, but now I can put the mousse on my hair tie it down take a shower when I leave out I'm still you know halfway cute (laughs) you know so now that I bleached my hair I'm like oh my god do you still perm your hair so yeah I've been blonde for about a week Mm -hmm. so typically I would definitely perm my hair every two weeks Mm -hmm. and now I have no idea what I'm gonna do since I found (laughs) out I can't throw a perm in my hair right so um, I'm a bit nervous. I'm not sure how long I'm going to keep this hair <laughs> color. <laughs> so um, are you just going to cut it? Because no one relaxes a deal breaker. Right. Um, well, honestly, I like to wear my hair kind of short, more pixie cut. Right. This so is a regardless... little too long for me okay. right now. Um, so I was going to get it cut probably within another week anyway. But my friend who did the color was telling me that I need to keep the length and the texture because it makes the color look better. Right. Mm-hmm. So um, right now I'm just having fun with it. You know, I'm and not. It's good. I thank love you. It. The thank color you. Really suits you. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Thank you. My cousin and my not not my cousin. I'm sorry. My niece and my sister told me that I look like um, an Italian woman. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh my God. I can see. I, 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 I see. The girl from Rocky. I, I see French. Like oh, really? Like French girl. Yeah. yeah. They were like, "You look like some Italian woman." I was like, "Really? Okay." Yeah, it looks good. I mean, you look Thank good you. with short hair. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sushi. Thank sushi. you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I wore. Sh- I've been wearing short hair forever. I wore it short in college, and then you know I was trying to let it grow and all that crap, and then I just finally had enough. You know, so it's easier. And do you, like, find that you're shampooing your hair, like, um, every time you, you work out? No, no. Okay. So mm-hmm. how often do you shampoo your hair? Once a week. Yeah. Once a week. Yeah, because I sweat so much, but then once I put the water with the Nairobi on it and tie it down, there's no reason for me to wash it so much. I mean, just once a week. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think that's the typically the case, like, typically the case that most 
people should if you're working out every, every now I have week, seen women should, working out with wigs you know bonnets um bonnets. I do <laughs> bonnets yes <laughs> yes don't know how but a bonnet you know um you know I think with I'm, the, still, I'm still I'm still I'm like stuck on bonnet yes, on the bonnet yes bonnets you know as black women we're trying to preserve the hairstyle as much like as bonnets we can. need to be worn in the house though. They, that's the only place like, they need to be like worn I feel like bonnets need to be thrown away <laughs> <laughs> Well, there are some instances you might have to put it on, like if you have rollers in your hair and you're trying to go to sleep or something like that. But I I definitely agree. A bonnet should not be worn anywhere besides the house. I don't like that, ladies. Yeah. Yeah, most I don't definitely. like it. Like, you know, that's, I don't like it's just my like... opinion. You know, like, don't don't shoot me, people. Like, I just, you know, like, to me, it's like... It's tacky. I, I wouldn't even say tacky, but it's just like, you know, you don't wear pajamas outside. I've seen that. But I've, I've seen, seen that. that. I've seen that. That goes, it, it goes in hand in hand. And, yeah. The pajamas and, and, the and, exactly. and, and house shoes. And house shoes. Don't wear house uh, My daughter. How, how are they house shoes Slippers. and you wearing them outside? Right. They don't, they no longer have shoes. One of my daughter friends, she came over and we were headed to Walmart <laughs> and she had the nerve to have a bonnet on her head. I was like, where are you going? Why? She was like, "Oh, I didn't do my hair." I was Walmart like, "You better throw a scarf or a hat on your head." It was, it was no way she could walk like, out. Like, there's my house. ways. I don't see that too much in Target, but bar, but Walmart. <laughs> there's <laughs> ways. Walmart Target. <laughs> you know what? Look, like, there's ways you can hide it, right? Like yes. you can put on a nice scarf and yeah. like put it like and, on, you and know, just tie it like, to the side. Yeah, like, that's you what know, I used you to do. Get real, right. You know, like Create Create jazzy, and yeah, that's what she had to do. Like you know, like I was like, you would not leave this house with me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Don't do. Come on. Come on, you guys. No more bonnets. Please. Outside the house. Please. Let's 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 stop that moving forward. Like I rather I rather I rather, uh, you know, if you're working out, put your hair in a protective style. Right. But well, not long. And, and you know what? I think sometimes the longer your hair is, the easier it is to work out with. You now, think so? Oh yeah, most definitely. No, um, I, I don't think so. Really? Mm. Because I I think when it's like at an average length, like my sister, for instance, she's natural. Uh-huh. And her hair is like in a bob now. She mm. cut it into a bob. And she struggles with it because she sweat a lot in her hair as well. And she try to wrap it and do all the different things, wearing a hat, but when she come out is still that puffiness right. that she's going to have to eventually straighten it out with. But see, that's the thing. Like, um, it goes back to like you wearing to your wear hair according, according to, to your, your lifestyle. lifestyle. Well, again, you know? but the thing is, okay, so if you like to work out, if mm-hmm. you know you sweat in your hair, then now she's been wearing braids because she don't want right. to have to sacrifice her working out due to her hair. Right. But, I mean, when you say wear your hair according to your lifestyle, so if you, it's so, so for instance, you're working out, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Now, what if you did sweat in your hair? And you, what would, would you do? I would probably would just stop? embrace, I would probably just embrace, no, I wouldn't stop. Hell right, no. Like, right. I would just probably yeah, she, embrace my yeah, curly texture. Right, that's it. Right. You know? But, but again, it, it, I think it all boils down to what you're comfortable with. Yeah, and what you does. feel like, how you look in the mirror. Because for me, even though, you know, everybody was like, oh, your hair is cute like that. Well, you might think it's cute like that, but I didn't like it like right. that. Your preference is more straighter style. Exactly. Right. And if I want to have the option to wear it curly, but I don't want to have to have to wear it curly all the time. Mm-hmm, I right. wanted that option to be able to sweat, wrap it up, and then if I want it slicked down, wear it slicked down, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think it all just comes down to what it is that you're comfortable with because some women love their hair looking like a boy i i just don't but what signifies it looking like no a no boy? no is not not that... saying that is is a bad thing like i i have girlfriends that wear their hair literally cut like a boy you know like get a fade like a fade, fade right. yeah and that looks beautiful on them right i you don't, just want, don't that. want that yeah right, i right, just right. don't want that for me right you right. know what i'm saying so again it's just all it, it just all go co it coincides with what it is that you feel like you're comfortable with. And the thing is, kind of like you know, I, you know, I want to bring 
I hate to bring up the texture thing, but I do feel like women feel like, you know, if their hair is not a certain texture, mm -hmm. then they don't feel comfortable wearing their hair. Like, they'll say, oh, well, it doesn't, the, my curls don't look right. Now, well, if, or if I had these kind of curls, mm -hmm. then I would feel more comfortable right. wearing it. You know, right. my hair natural. I've heard clients say that. Right. Well, and like, I mean, I can relate. Like, my mom have really naturally curly hair. My brother my does, too. Curly. Well, it's just, it's different just different a different of, texture. Right. right. Very fine, as they say, naturally curly hair. Whereas for me, growing up, I was quite ashamed of my hair because it was... Um, course, and my mom had no idea what to do with what, it. Why do you think you were af like ashamed of? Because my mom would make me, my mom would make comments like, oh, you know, because my sister hair is a lot more softer than mine mm -hmm. as well. And, you know, she would make comments about the different hair textures. Mm. So, you know, where I'm getting my hair pressed and jerry curls and all this stuff because she had no idea how to do it. She didn't have those problems with my sister and brother. Right. See, that so, says a lot. yeah. Yeah. So, of course, growing up, when you're going through all these different processes, trying to figure out what's the best fit for your hair, of course, the perm was. But it wasn't until I couldn't get a perm anymore that, of course, I had to embrace this naturalness. Mm -hmm. And then once I, um, what made it easier to tolerate was because I was putting weaves in. So I didn't have to still do my hair. So it grew really long in a natural state, which I absolutely loved. Mm -hmm. However, because I had been wearing weaves for so long, as my hair grew down here, I didn't even know how to take care of it. Yeah, <laughs> like, you didn't know how to take I care of it. I didn't know what to do. Hair. So, yeah, of course, you know, it was breaking off little by little. The front, it was a little shorter than the back because the front was left out to blend with the weave, was the everything else was healthy and beautiful or whatever. But um, as I was wearing my natural hair, you know, I'm working out, now I'm putting more heat to it. Mm -hmm. And before long, it was getting shorter and, and shorter and shorter, where I was just cycle. like, you know what, I, I, I don't know what to do with this. You know, it was too much work. Right. And I couldn't wear the weaves anymore because, you know, obviously it was breaking my hair off. And um, I had to make the decision, okay, I'll go to the hair salon and let's let somebody perm my hair. But then I found myself sitting in the hair salon for eight hours, which was crazy, with short hair that I could do myself. I found the perm for seven bucks. I go to Great Clips. I don't want to hear it. Get a I cut. I don't want to hear it. La, la, and la, 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 um, la, la, boom. She did not do an in-home perm. <laughs> la, 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 <laughs> All the time. <laughs> But I can do that because it's the short. The stylist in me does However, not want to hear that. I can do that because it's short. I used to do it in college all the time. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. if my hair was even a little bit longer than do this, not do your perms at, uh, I would not be home, able please, to okay? do it myself. You go to a stylist, don't do colors and relaxes at home. Okay. okay. Mm, well, <laughs> yes. Do you color your own hair? No. Well, I only put rinses on it besides this because I'm allergic to dyes. Mm -hmm. um, so, but you, yeah, you did that. bleach your hair. Yes. Okay. So, but a, a girlfriend of mine, she went to hair school, so she know what she's doing. I have no idea. But okay. when I was doing um, darker colors, I could only use one <laughs> rinse oh, yeah, because that. everything, a demi, everything would break me out. So I, you know, I was like, I could do this myself. You right. know. So that was the only thing I was doing was right. a rinse. That's it. Now, so I, um, as a hairstylist, you know, how often do you recommend for someone to be shampooing their hair if they're, you know, they have, like, they are sweating out their scalp and all that stuff? You know, how often do you recommend? I think that you need to shampoo your hair at least, like, at least, at least once a week, coupled with, a, like, a dry shampoo, you know? Like, if you're sweating in your hair a lot, then... Even if you're wearing it curly? Or if in you, its natural state? Yeah, if you're wearing it curly, I feel like, um, yeah, still once a week. I mean, because, again, you don't want to, like, shampoo it too much because you don't want to, you know, rinse out the natural oils right. and, you know, right. of the hair because then you'll, curls, because the the curl is, is a loop. The oils that build up in your scalp, scalp take longer, take longer to, to, travel. Go, to travel down each curl. Mm. So you want, you know, you still want to, like, preserve those oils i couldn't so. even imagine going longer than a week without washing my hair oh is it people, people that, that yes, don't wash their hair yes for once a, a week yes a eight months yeah and, and the I, thing I, is I, everyone everyone what? is not a candidate for that <laughs> it's a lot of people out here that are not 
shampooing their hair as frequent. Because as they it, should. To and, me, and it, it goes and it into your skin. And it causes dandruff. dandruff. And it yeah. causes... Your, you, your, your, your face. face. Yeah. The oils build up in yes. your face. Yeah. And that you have overactive sebaceous glands because you're not shampooing. Because it starts with the scalp, people. Like, it starts... A healthy scalp is going to get you healthy hair. Right. You know? Scalp and diet. Like, you have to... Or diet and scalp. Like... You have to have a, a healthy foundation to get the follicles growing out of the hair. Right, and so it starts to take within, care of that foundation. in the inside. Exactly. First. Well, I know for me, I dealt with psoriasis my entire youth. Mm -hmm. um, it was terrible. You know, I, I didn't eat bad. <clears throat> you know, um, drunk plenty of water, um, everything. But the more I was perming my hair over time, it got worse right. and worse, and it started to. Um, spray it down to my forehead. Mm -hmm. And finally, my last stylist was like, I can't perm your hair anymore. Right. Um, and that's what did make me, I had to go to the dermatologist because it was um, hereditary as well. Um, but once we treated it, you know, and then I learned, um, you know, what types of perms I can and cannot use as well. Mm -hmm. um, that made a huge difference, you know, as far as my, my dandruff. Like, so which what, what what were the relaxers that they recommended? Um, well, I only used um, Design Sensitive oh, Scalp. Okay, so because I, the, I burn super brand, easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I burn super super. My scalp is just very very sensitive. I have to use Vaseline on my face. So oh, wow. you know, every it, my skin is just really sensitive. So once I learned, you know, what aggravates my skin and my scalp and different things like that, you know, now I know what I can and cannot do. Right. You know, so I think it's just a matter how, of being. How long did you leave the, the relaxer in your hair for? Like when you were doing it yourself, how long? Um, if 10 minutes, 10, okay. 15 minutes. Because my hair is short. I don't have to, you know, because right. I get it cut before but I not, even not, not only that, and, and um, so like in the Dominican hair salon mm -hmm. um, where I used to work in mm -hmm. New York, um, the lady from the salon, she would perm obviously relax people's hair and she would start in the back and work her way up but by the time she was in like you know like she would part the person's hair in four mm -hmm. ponytails pigtails whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. and she would move them to the shampoo bowl to remove like the one in the back, back and then let the front right. process and let the front process because mm -hmm. um everybody's hair works different mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. By the time she got to the the front, like it would have been already be soft in the back, like well, not soft, but like you I know, know she the curls out. would lo right. loosen it up, loosen already. up, yeah. right? And you don't want the the you don't sometimes you don't want the 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 hair to be bone straight. No, you don't. You want it to have some sort of elasticity. You exactly. You never want your relaxes to be super super straight. Right. 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 Yeah. right. So and, and that even goes for color as right. well. You know, like if you over processing the hair, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, like you're damaging your hair. Yeah. So I think that's that's if you guys are doing relaxers, like keep that in mind. Please don't do at home relaxers. <laughs> you know, I, look, if you want to <laughs> look at this one over here, <laughs> I, I know she does. She's doing it at her own. Do it at your own risk. Exactly. Well, we I don't, don't have any hair. And just don't have us kind of <clears throat> come in the, um, trying to fix it. OK, I don't that's, have any that's, hair. That's, yeah. that's the thing. That's I get my hair thing. cut like <laughs> once every two weeks. Shorter but my thing is like, you know, you can't like go, up, you know, Honestly, there's hair professionals for a reason. Oh, yeah, most you definitely. Know? Most definitely. So, you know, like, a lot of people watch YouTube videos, and they're watching the next girl do a YouTube, mm -hmm. you know? Like, exactly. And exactly. that's not, like, you yeah. know, I, w I don't recommend that, you right. know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and, again, you got to know, like, I've been doing this since college. So, you know, I've, <laughs> I've had some bad experiences. So, but now... You know, I pretty much know my hair. I know what I need to use, and I know how long I need to keep it on. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I wouldn't definitely not advise everybody to do an in-home No, yeah. chemicals go. You know, we're not at home doing our own root canals, people, okay? Exactly. We're, like, right. Yeah. <laughs> there are hairstylists for a reason. Yeah, we are right. professional. <laughs> right. I, I mean, look, I like... I've worked in a hair salon and I and I have a passion for hair for a long time. I don't right. have my license, but that doesn't mean that I, I can't do it. Right. You know? 
Um, so like I do before I'm in the process of, yeah. right. But even when I used to work in New York, I would always do my hair. Like, yeah. you know, when I didn't have time to go to salon, I would, you know, do my own thing as right. well, you know, but that's because I have experience, you know? Yeah. So sometimes like a license is not always like, you know, the thing, obviously people go to the, <laughs> go to beauty school and get your license, but you know, it's, you get experience from doing it like yeah. repetition like right. you know and and some but, people don't even know what the type of texture hair what type of perms to use cause, so it can be dangerous even if you're going to a professional stylist sometimes yeah, it can be you know because i've had people pr put supers in my hair and my scalp was bleeding oh. you know so it's just a matter of um i don't know how they could even teach that but you know, you just have to do your research, right? And and, and, a, consultation. A, and right. a consultation, and a consultation, and uh, you, you know, know like most... for myself, I, I I think I was very naive at the, well, I just didn't know um, that I didn't need a super because I was, you know, my hair was coarse, so I was taught, oh, you need a super to right. get it straight, you know, right? Not knowing that I didn't need a super, no, you right. know, so. And of course, his hair is the most the, the, the finest, yeah, the fine, the fragilest, right? right. But yeah. you know, growing up. People thought that the coarse's hair needed the strongest perm. Right. You know? So that's so when just I started. An education. Yeah. 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 So that's, you know. It, it really bothers me, like, you know, just to hear you say, like, you know, like your background. You Like, my mom comes from that. Like, oh, you have, like, kinky bad hair, mm -hmm. you know? Just to hear that, like, yeah. it bothers me now. And, and, because and it, it sets up the yeah. stage, and that's probably why, yeah. you know, you don't feel comfortable even, you know, that you opt for, right. you know, straighter textures and straighter looks. Well, you know, you know I did embrace my curls. Like, literally, when I was natural, I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, I and didn't even were? know I had a curly pattern. Because you're taught, oh, your hair is just coarse. But then... Once and, or, I, and, and unless it's like a you know a looser curl, right? But when, once I was natural, I was like, oh, my hair isn't as bad as I thought it was. Right. Seriously, you know. So it's not that I'm ashamed of the texture of my hair. Okay. The perm make my life a lot easier. I see. But that. But you think that's now? Now, or? yes. Now, but not now. not from like before. No, no. Before I was. Before I really got heavily into working out. I mean, I could have pro possibly kept it natural. But now it's not even in my lifestyle to keep it natural because I literally get up at 6.30 in the morning. I work out. My hair is wet. I slick it down, go work, go to work, got to go back for another, especially when I'm a training. I don't have time to be trying to figure out what I'm going to do with natural hair. And you do competitions, right? Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Yeah. So it makes it a little bit different because, different because I do work, I, you know, different things like that. So with my lifestyle, the perm just made it so much more convenient. Where, you know, I could just slick it down, moose it, tie it up at night, boom, I wake up and slick down, go work out, get it wet, slick it back down, go to work. You know, and if I want to curl my hair on the weekends and make it whatever funky I can, mm -hmm. you know, but that's only on the weekend. But do you think that that is it because, um, like, because you really wouldn't have to do a lot of maintenance. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, like, I know you're trying to you convince know what, me. No, no, no. I just want to. Yeah. You know, well, I, because, I had my hair that short. Mm -hmm. so you and want, it was the easiest to just, like, put something yeah. on and wear it in its curly well, natural but, state. But, but again, I, like I like it people, curly. No, no, no. I do. But I like having the options to straighten this, too. Mm -hmm. Like, right now, I, I wore it straight over the weekend. Right? And it was in this little whatever hairstyle. It was super cute. Uh-huh. But... But, <laughs> but do you don't think if you had like diarrhea texture that it, it, you wore it short? Because this is what I, I'm telling you. This is what I'm hearing. Like mm -hmm. in the salons, like mm -hmm. it's like okay, well, you know, I don't have any. Like, why do you feel like you have to do something to that curl? You know what well, I mean? Well, I like because I like having the option to be able to wear my hair straight. But you can, right? But However, I'm when I go to the gym and I sweat. I need to wear it like this. Mm -hmm. I can't slick it down right now. Because if I try to slick this down, it's so thick up here. I ha I, I look like a grandma. To me, it's just not as straight as I would like it to be. It's not going to lay down the way I want it to lay down. Now, to the average person, they might say, oh, I like it like that. So what? I don't. <laughs> you know, and that's just, that's just how I feel about it. Because I, I curled it the other day and... I was going to, you know, I'm trying to get used to styling it and, mm -hmm. you know, figuring it out the style. 
and it was so thick. It was just so thick. And I, I wet it again, slicked it back down. I got to my girlfriend's house and she was like, all you need to do is just flip it just a little bit. And I loved it because it, it was laying down again, you know, but my, I do have thick hair naturally anyway. So I like the, the fact that if I want to wear it flat, I can. If I want to wear it curly, right. I can. You like it. You you like the versatility exactly. of it. Exactly. You exactly. just don't want it to be just one. But how, I don't. I, okay, so how can you wear it curly when you you relax your hair? It's yeah. curly now. Oh, oh, whatever this is. <laughs> but you but you but you never like wear your hair like that like mm -hmm. that long. You said right. I I have in the past. Not mm -hmm. since I permed it, but because I put this color in it, um, it was better for me to do it this way. Right. It's easier because I don't, I, I don't have to put heat on it, you know. But, again, it was one of those things that I was just thinking, even this morning, like, what if I want to wear it straight, you know? So it's a matter, I haven't tried to wear it, like, slick down since it's been this color. Not mm -hmm. yet. Because I know I still have some relaxer in it. Um, so... You know, I may play with it tonight and just see how, how I feel about it tomorrow. Right. But because I know I won't be able to relax it for a while, now I'm trying to figure out, okay, I could wear it like this. I like it, you mm -hmm. know. I do want to get it cut because I, I'm just used to having shorter hair. But I know, you know, with the, the you know, the uh, color, color and different things like that, it's probably it's better. Color. Yeah. Right. Keep some but of honestly, length. you know, when you do high lift color, like you're also like, you know, your strands get straighter. Right. So you and that's not. what she was telling me. Yeah. That's what she was telling me. She was like, your hair is naturally going to get straighter anyway. Anyway. Right. Yeah. 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 So that's that's a relief from the, <laughs> from the colorizer. Yeah. <laughs> you know <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy about that. OK. okay. But my hey, daughter is natural. Be... No, my daughter is natural. Um, you know, and she have three and different types of curls. Yes, yeah. You know, most of us do. Yeah. So it, you know, I I won't ever put a perm in her hair. Now, if she decides she want to do that, I'm totally I will against kill it. Her. No. So, <laughs> but um, do not put a hair. Don't do not put a relaxer in your hair, Kamari. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. Um, that's that, I guess. Um, you just have to do what's comfortable for you, you know? Whatever and works for you and whatever you're comfortable with, you know? Like, honestly, we have our recommendation and what, you know, we, we feel. We like, feel, you know, but that's not what you may be, you, you may feel comfortable with. And everybody's different, you know? Right. I want the whole world to embrace their curls. Me too, honestly. <laughs> I do. Like, I really do. Yeah, I love my curls. Yeah. yeah. But you prefer to wear it straight. <laughs> So how much do you love your curls? <laughs> Let's see. Not Let's enough see. to go totally natural. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So now uh, let's get into the second subject. Right. It's which whatever. is the whatever portion. Mm -hmm. um, so in the beginning of the show, we said is love like are you a love addict like and is that really like is that a term you know like love addiction mm -hmm. so um what is love addiction love addiction is where you, i mean to you well obviously. well i identify myself as a love addict because you know there's there's a difference between loving someone and being addicted to someone mm -hmm. you can love somebody but you can love them enough to know when it's time to leave that person. Correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Unfortunately, with a love addict, it's almost like a drug. And once you get a, almost a hit from that person, it can be just a simple kiss, a simple hug, um, you know, or even just something as small as, you know, liking the way they walk. You know, mm. you are potentially addicted because you become obsessive and you're trying to constantly hold on to that person because they are an object of your affection or object of your attention basically mm. so what made me identify myself as a love addict was because I was constantly going in and out of these tumultuous toxic destructive relationships 
And the last one that I had, which lasted about three and a half years, I finally had to stop and take a, a, a real look at myself mm -hmm. and try to figure out what allowed me to stay in this type of environment for three and a half years. Right. Especially based on everything that we had been through. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when I started therapy. And then I found out I was a cold, I was codependent. Did your therapist say that that's no, what no, it was? No, that it was mm -mm. that you were in nope, love she didn't. Mm -mm. She um, didn't label it. She didn't label it at all. Um, I, I came to terms that I was codependent. Okay. And then um, I read some material um, related to codependency, and I started the 12-step program. So I go to AA meetings oh. uh, for love addicts. I didn't um, even know there was such a thing. Yes, yeah. yeah. So it's called sex and love addiction. Some people are um, addicted to sex, where they use sex as a form of, you know, everybody enjoys sex most of the time. Right. But you become a sex addict when it's, it almost, um, what do you call it, uh, consumes, consumes your yeah. every thought. Like mm. you got to go to the bathroom and mas masturbate. Then when you get back from the bathroom, you sitting on the computer watching porn. Oh, wow. wow. So those are the type of people that are in my um, AA meetings. Right. Where I identify myself as a love addict. Is and so because, did mm -hmm. you consume yourself with, like, love? Like, right. Like so whenever I'm, whenever I'm, like, hooked on a person, mm -hmm. my day is, like, it can't even function until mm -hmm. I hear from that person. Oh, wow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you ever look at people on Snapped, or um, hear a person that killed their spouse or whatever, you know, especially if they've had some um, domestic issues and different things like that. Um, oftentimes it is due to somebody being a love addict because that person is making, you, that you rely on that person to make you happy for your validation. Right. So it, it's almost like, are alcoholic yeah and they're waiting for that next hit and they're you know or a drug addict that's waiting for that um, next hit you right. know and it's even been clinical proven that you know um, like I have an anxious type of personality meaning that it's almost like I crave intimacy hmm. right and it's due to father issues daddy issues whatever but when you have an anxious type personality you crave intimacy and typically you're drawn to a love avoidant type person that wants intimacy but have a fear of it so it's almost like a tug and pull type right. relationship you get closer like a commitment he pulls flow, away almost. he pulls away you get closer so it's it's like a little dance that you keep doing with each other yeah you know and so with love addiction or a love addict such as myself I have to be really conscious about who I'm um, being drawn to and why. And right. then being aware of the different types of triggers that's causing my angst or my anxiety to, you know, um, become like all over the place because I can't even think rationally anymore. Wow. Yeah. And it's are like, you, are ahead. you in a relationship now? Well, I, I no. So I just okay. got out of something that was about, it lasted for about three months. And in the beginning, I could tell, you know, he was a great guy, but it was some inconsistencies on his side, you know. I And I realized it was such a great learning experience. Did you feel like that you were, um, like, having that mm -hmm. love ad I was. addiction yep. mm -hmm. and anxiety, anxiety towards, towards it? Anxiety towards it. I was trying to keep reestablishing what we had in the beginning. Like um, when, when you say reestablishing, did you like have to have a title? Like, what are we doing? Like, right, that sort of thing. Exactly. Instead of just like exactly just easing, easing into, into it. it. Mm -hmm. I think women are like that though in general. Like they want to know like what are we doing? Right. And you know it, they may not say it. I know. Look, <laughs> you saw look, my face. <laughs> soy thinks completely different. I well, sure do. Well, you know, honestly, because of my love addiction, I did have to learn that love addicts such as myself we fall first before we really get to know if this person right. is really who we need to even be involved with. Right. And so this, this because I went on a sabbatical, I didn't date for an entire year and a half. And finally, I was like, okay, I'm done. I did my 12 steps. I did my 12 months, got my little chip and everything. I was like, okay, it's time. I got to go for it, you yeah. know. Had some little flukes here and there, nothing serious. 
sex partners or whatever. But this was the first person that I had dealt with since being out of recovery. Right. And um, and it still taught me I have some work to do, you know. Um, but it was good because there were a lot of lessons learned. Like I, I tend to react before I really think about Mm -hmm. you know the situation and just learning how to not um act on my impulses and do you feel like are you setting yourself like are you kind of like making up these scenarios in your head about yes so yes so it's it's you do that toy hell no Lucky I'm too soy. Busy. Lucky soy. I, I I just don't even find the time. Like, <laughs> yeah, we know. It's just <laughs> well, and see, no you shame. know what? Honestly, the the beauty about soy is mm-hmm. that you may have a secure type of attachment style, mm-hmm. meaning that it's okay if it don't work out. Right. I'm good. Right. Whereas an anxious personality, if it don't work out, then we think it's a reflection about our self worth. Mm. And that's what it boils down to, having low self-worth, low self-esteem, you know, because these are the records that you play over and over in your head. So it's almost like I have to go through the experience and realize that everything is not going to work out and it's okay. And the thing is, and, 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 and I guess you would say, like, how do you find working out? Because with how I look at life is I look I feel like you are a creator of your own life. And, you know, people come and go. Right. And it's seasons for everything. And right. And just because something is has moved on and shifted into another season doesn't right. mean that it didn't work out. That person was just supposed to be there for a certain time. And that's and what I'm learning lesson. how to appreciate now. Even with yeah. this last situation, I mean, you know, do you, lessons in. Do you believe that everything happens for a reason or that we make our own choices? I believe that everything happens for a reason. So you don't believe that, you know, we make a choice. So if I make a choice to go vibe this tank, mm-hmm. that I'm not going to have a consequence? Or is that a reason? Like, I don't know if I'm well, explaining I think myself. That's a, I think that's different. I think it's all choices. Yeah. I the mean, whole, this whole universe. experience right. I think is, I is think, a bunch of choices that you're making. Right, you are the, so, the controller of your own life. You are in control like the pilot. You are creating, right. creating, 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 so creating. So if you make the decision, okay, well, you know what, I'm, I'm, you know, whatever it is, and you just put it out in the universe, like I'm going to be successful, I'm going to be successful, I'm gonna, and you're working towards it, you're working towards it. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen for you. Yes. I believe it. I believe like, that. You right. know, but I, like I don't, you know, I'm on the fence where everything happens for a reason. Like that just can't, you know, coexist together. Well, I think it does, you know, because though I think that you are creating these th- these reasons, you know what I mean? I think your choices help determine your your life lessons. Yeah. And if you're you have to go through the lesson in order to create that reality for yourself because Everything, be it good or bad, is a part of what of you're creating. Of the journey, what you're you creating. What you're creating. And then sometimes I think that when you don't learn from it, you're going to keep on re- going through going the same thing. Same thing. And, and that, it's going to come into a different and form. And so that's and why to I was you thankful the, for this experience because now. This recent one. Yes, right. because now it taught me, okay, it wasn't meant to be and that's okay. You right. know, however, I needed to experience that. Mm-hmm. So, because he was different from a lot of the other guys that I had dated. So, what I'm learning is to take the good stuff with me because it's yeah. only going to get better. Mm-hmm. Right. But I and also, the bad too, you right. know, you know, cause right? The bad because is, that's what's or, helping quote, me grow, to grow yeah, and you. figure out as a love addict what it is that I need to have a successful relationship. Mm-hmm. Because that before I, I wasn't aware of what codependency and love addiction was. What, so what are those signs? Do you think that well, you need to is it that you you know your relationships lap over and you know cuz some people like well, can't ever can be, be alone yeah. like codependent like they are right. like as soon as they are in a relationship <laughs> they already you know, excuse me, as soon as they're out of a relationship, they're but already yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm like, damn. Like, yeah. Well, I think with a love addict, of of course, we are we are addicted to the fantasy, mm. the fantasy of the fantasy. the perfect relationship, the, like the, beginning. the person. Yeah. 
in that fantasy, mm -hmm. you're holding on to that person because they are a part of your fantasy. You're not and really you got the dopamine going, like right. you know, it's all nice, brand it's all new, beautiful in the yes. beginning. Yes. You're not dealing with and, life and issues. It's yeah, just not you know it, exactly. But as soon as start things start to getting go sideways real. and getting yeah, exactly. And this person isn't what you thought they were, or they yeah. you know because you're putting this person up on a pedestal. Right, they're your everything. Right, and you're not gonna be, even be settled until they you get that contact or reassurance from them. Right. Which what I'm learning is you have to reassure yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's good to be in a relationship where you guys can compliment each other, but that person can't be your everything. No, right. And you that's have to what complete. To you learn. have to be complete. First, yeah. before you get and, and no one is I'm gonna learning. be, no one is and gonna f like complete you. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that you gotta be complete first before you get into any relationship because you grow every day. You no, know? I, I mean, you're. I feel like you are going. I'm saying like you just have to be like you have to be secure, secure with yourself. yourself. Right. Like I know that you evolve. Yeah. Like yeah, you know, but, that, things, but then you're gonna evolve. Right, right but, but then that's not always the case, right? Because you okay, like let's say you know what. Like her, she went on a whole year, like by yourself, mm -hmm. like, and you're like, okay, well, now I'm ready. Mm -hmm. You know, you went to date and mm -hmm. you still felt like, you know, you right. weren't ready. Well, it wasn't that I wasn't ready. It was that I needed to start experiencing because it's, it, it, you can do anything by yourself. Mm -hmm. It's easy not to. It's way <laughs> easier by yourself. Because <laughs> you you're not dealing with somebody else. You're not dealing with your emotions. It is. You're not dealing with your emotions. It you're is. not. Shut you up, know. Sorry. I love being in a relationship, but I'm just telling you, I mean, it's work. It's work. Just like anything is work. Yeah, exactly. Right. But it's again, in a order human. to have a successful relationship, I first have to learn how to get my own self-worth in line mm -hmm. with myself. Mm -hmm. And I can't seek that self-worth through somebody else. And that's what a love addict does. Mm -hmm. And it all boils down to low self-esteem. Well, maybe I'm a love addict. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, Tyler. <Dinah. laughs> well, I am coming out Disney with a book. Disney got all of y'all fucked up. I am coming out with a book. <laughs> So hopefully you will read my book and it will help. Freaking you know. Disney and them goddamn um, black cinema movies. I just look Freaking honestly Best like I, and all of I believe that we were all meant to love yes, other people. Yes, most definitely. We and, are. But it, it becomes we're a supposed problem to have that love when experience. It, 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 we Straight are love. love, but we are love. We are we love. We are love. We were made for yes, love. Yes, right. but it becomes a problem. If you're in a tumultuous relationship that's toxic, that's destructive, and you're still in it, mm -hmm. that's when it becomes a problem. Right. And that's why I had to realize that there was something going on inside of me. Right. Because any normal person or anybody with self-esteem, anybody that cared about themselves would not allow themselves to be in that type of relationship, you know. And that's, you know, again, so that's the difference between being in a committed relationship. That's typically work. And when did you realize this, though? When did you realize, like... It, it was um, once my relationship ended with my ex-boyfriend, <clears throat> it was it was bad. He was cheating constantly, constantly. You were cheating? He was cheating. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. and, um, did you cheat? <laughs> no, well, maybe once, but yeah, no we was on a deal. break, whatever. He was cheating my one to his 50, okay? <laughs> so, and then um, I didn't even like who I was, I looked at in the mirror. I didn't like myself. Mm -hmm. I did not, you know, you start allowing yourself to go through these different things and you do some crazy stuff, jumping out the bushes while a girl leaving the house. Just oh, stupid, stupid, stupid stuff. And you're like, what the hell? You know, and it was just finally after he cheated that one last time and had been driving her car for six months, pretending like it was his boss. And, you know, I was oh. just like, you know what? It's either going to be you or me, <laughs> but somebody's going to end up dead. <laughs> hey, but you know what? I just feel like people just need to be honest, though. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. the thing, though. It's like but people are that communication. And not going to be honest. He was never going to be honest. But it was a and great maybe experience. It, but and I think that a lot of men probably aren't going to be honest because mm -hmm. they are they're in fear of how a woman the woman is going to react. Yep. You know exactly. And if, and if they were, if the woman was just like, I mean, babe, I mean, hey, I mean, I know it's hard to 
you know, have and sex with that one <laughs> vagina every single week. I do. Listen. <laughs> Well, I mean, honestly, that is a lot of people that are in my AA meetings. They are the majority. I say about ninety percent of men. Mm -hmm. There's maybe two or three women, mm -hmm. um, and people come and go constantly. But the the because um, women are taught to be, you know, we're not supposed to be that way. Well, but you know, again, I don't. I mean, I don't listen. I don't believe that. Like, you know, you have that misconception. Like, I am. No, no, I'm not saying yeah. you. I'm talking about just. In general, I feel like, you know, w women are taught that, you know, that, oh, if, you know, you're a hoe, if you, you know, have multiple sex partners and all of this stuff and you crave sex. Listen, just... if you're single, you can go have sex with whomever you want. And if you're in a relationship and your partner is aware of your, like, what you're doing, then mm -hmm. cool. With your discretion. You know, like, exactly. Uh, but I think, like Soy said, it all boils down to honesty. Yeah. Like and that's what I'm saying. You so know, it's some not, people it's, can handle that, and some people cannot. Yeah, right. And I, I don't. Maybe men can handle it a little bit more than women. Um, as far as like a woman being, <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Men cannot <laughs> handle. I think women handle it better if well, she's we were, open to that. We would. I, I see. Quite honestly, I think the older I've gotten and talking to married men. And their reasons why they cheat, mm -hmm. and it's not that they don't love their spouses. No, they were just saying they get bored. bored. They get really bored. bored. But however, I've never been married. The longest relationship I've had was maybe, maybe four years. You mm -hmm. know, and I've dealt with compulsive cheaters. And that's the right around you know? the time that you start getting bored. And so it's like you know, my my t my thinking towards relationships have kind of shifted because it makes me wonder. Are people really meant to be, you know? This is what I've been saying. <laughs> you know, I, but to me, that's it's different. Like for every person and every yeah, you know, yeah. And uh, again, yeah. everybody is different. You know, everybody is different. And lots of people struggle with it, though. And they won't be honest, but they struggle with it. Yeah. It's hard. With Obviously, it's hard. And, and being this just this monogamous. But but you gotta like like any any other you know if you have a business. But that's a choice. That is a choice. Right. To be monogamous it's definitely is, a choice. is definitely I don't think a choice. Odds, no, we are not. It's definitely a choice because um, some people can, you know, be uh, promiscuous and be okay with it, you know, so and not care what anybody else thinks, mm -hmm. you know. So I just think it boils down to being really true to yourself and true to your mate if you are in a relationship. Because some people, that's a deal breaker. They're like, no, I'm not dealing with yeah, that. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. But um, I think so people don't be jumping out the bushes and, you know, <laughs> keying up cars and stuff. Um, Flat you have to definitely kind of crazy be now. honest. So that's why sometimes it's more convenient for a married man to deal with a married woman. Because they're both in situations right. that they, you know, love their spouses. They're not going to leave. Right. But they just want something different. Yeah, something different. So I think that's why you have a lot of that going on. A lot of Yeah, cheating. but, like, let's say if, if you know, for whatever reason in a situation, um, the husband is married to the woman and, and for X amount of years. And then the woman tells to the man, hey, you know, I want to have, you know an open relationship mm -hmm. many a lot of men won't be like okay of course with that. not of course not you know right and and i think you know a woman would be like would entertain the idea you know somewhat you know more than a man mm-hmm like, or would be okay with it mm -hmm. more than a man they want know? us to be okay with them going ahead and having something you know on the side but when it's a when the shoe is on the other foot, they can't. Right. Deal well, with that. I think men were taught. You know, men we've are been just socialized. taught. Yeah. Men are just taught that they are the alpha male, mm -hmm. and that they should be able to explore. Right. But and we're women supposed to just be are these supposed meek, to just be the you know, you know com yeah, mm -hmm. you know, these meek, you know, individual co comforting, and we're not supposed. And it's like, okay, yeah, go ahead, do you, mm -hmm. honey? Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have any sexual desires. We don't. <laughs> We don't want different penises either. You know, we just want your magnificent penis for the rest of our lives. I think it's uh, all about, like, you know, sparking the relationship, you know? I've well, yes. That. Now, that is true. You do have to have put on a wig, throw some heels on, you know, have oh, sex God, in the back seat. 
of the car sometimes. Cause get your new penis and then you're gonna be tired of that other penis. Exactly. <laughs> you swap them out. See. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> you know what? I'm done. <laughs> Sula is like, honey. Mm. I'm done. <laughs> but basically, you are done. <laughs> Being a love addict yeah. is you need to you need to really have some good self esteem about yes. you know and, and that comes in time and it comes right and you I mean it's, and you need to work on yourself you have right. to work on yourself you do. But, but that's like all the time you gotta work on yourself because like I'm talking from experience mm-hmm. from myself like mm-hmm. I went through you know in the beginning I went through whatever I went through with my partner, Mm -hmm. you know, and it was hard. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I knew that I had to take the time to heal from whatever I had going on in the past or from my childhood, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was hard, you know, and I and it was and like that was a point in my life where I I looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, I felt ugly, Mm -hmm. you know, like. And I had I had to deal with that with myself, mm-hmm. you know. But that didn't mean that I, I I got out of the relationship. Now it was rocky, but you know, he helped, mm-hmm. you know. And but, and, that's and what, I grew from the relationship. But that's you know, we when both you grew, have a, a, you know? a mate that understands Stands and they're and they're willing. And they're oh, willing he to didn't help understand. <laughs> well, obviously he was willing to go through it with he you. Is. Yeah. 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 But you know what? I think it all boils down to even with any relationship. Anyone that anyone that lasts a long I time. I think that maybe. person just needs to. And I finally had to tell myself somebody is gonna have to appreciate my craziness. Yeah. You know, and and that's how it's gonna work mm-hmm. because I'm not perfect. And the last and no guy, one is. And the no last one guy is. just could not take my personality. He right. was like, "You need to be nice all the time." I'm nice, but damn it, I have a, a, you know, I get upset. Right. You know, I'm, so it was like, it was never going to work. He was never going to be able to accept Kim for Kim. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the person that is out there for me is going to realize I, I'm nice, I'm hot, I'm this, I'm that, I'm all over the place sometimes. Yeah. And be okay with that. Mm-hmm. And be like, okay, babe, come down. It's okay. We're good. Right. You right. know, it's because everybody know. has their personality. Yes. Yeah. Everybody and just like, have their stuff. Just like we do, they do too. They exactly. do too. You know? yeah. Exactly. So it's exactly. whose bullshit you want to deal with. Exactly. exactly. The longest. Exactly. Right, if you exactly. want to be, you know, yeah. with that one person. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be with that wrong well, one person. Well, you know, and, and you know what? The thing is, like, I've always wanted to get married. Like, oh, I always wanted to get married. Freaking Disney. And yes. And so, because I've never been married, I was engaged, but I wasn't, I've never been married. All of my friends was married in committed relationships. Then you start thinking something is wrong with you. That's mm-hmm. all, you know. So now that I'm okay with where I am, it's like, okay, now I'm just having to learn how to develop, to learn how to develop a foundation. With, even if that person don't work out, we still develop some form of friendship. Mm-hmm. Right. And that does take time, yeah. you know, and learning how to do that is now my new process yeah. as a love addict. Well, do you even disclose this with the new people? Like, I do did. You say, I did. You know, like, mm-hmm. hey, you know. Yep. I, I did. Even, eventually I had to. I'm, I, sometimes when you're away from me. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking like, of you. I was and like, I'm going through withdrawals. So if you I'm being triggered, don't text I me back. To. It's yes. gonna be. It's a problem. It's, it's a problem. Um, there's this new that. Netflix uh, series. It's called You. Have you Have you seen no. it? No. Uh-huh. And it's going on around like on. Uh, and this this man is fucking crazy. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say fucking crazy. <laughs> like on the. You gotta watch it. Uh-huh. Like he, he, it's a documentary. No, it's it's like a, it's sh- a it's show. A show. No, so it's yeah. like a scripted show. Yeah. Oh, okay. And he's <laughs> nuts. Like I was watching it all day. Like not yes, not all day yesterday, but like I watched a, c- a couple of episodes last night. Mm-hmm. And the guy is just like so in love. He k- even kills. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. He, but that's spo- spoiler. 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 But that's a form <laughs> of a love addict. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Because you become so obsessed with that person. I'm just like, how do people have time? <laughs> got to go to the, you know, if you got kids, you got to go to the grocery store. Like, what? How? No, people find people find time. Yeah, you, know, you like, find time for what you want to do. Yeah. I guess. Girl. I haven't been that obsessed with someone else like that. 
But that's just me, you know. I get it. I mean, yeah. people, you know, everyone is different. Yeah. Look, I don't feel like I'm a love addict, but I love, you know, I love to love and I love to give back and you know mm-hmm. like you know that but, yeah you like it's, um you like the feeling of like okay. yeah like partnership even, right and, you being know, in a, in a in relationship, relationship yeah. you know, like, I, I mean that's all normal mm-hmm. you know that yeah. that that aspect of it is completely normal it just gets normal uh, it just it becomes gets abnormal when it's like, right when it becomes constantly thinking I'm, obsessive it yeah. becomes a part of who you are it becomes to the point where by any means necessary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's not healthy. Right. Yeah. And that's when it becomes a problem. Because a healthy loving relationship or being able to just be able to love in a healthy way, mm-hmm. you know what's beneficial for you and the other person. It's not just one sided. And yeah. for a love addict, oftentimes it's just one sided. Yeah. You know. Well, and that's when you. loving And and you don't want to be in a relationship. Unhealthy. You don't want to be in a relationship where, you know, like you're loving somebody and that person doesn't want to be with exactly. you. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Like who wants that type of love? Exactly. Nobody. You know? But anyway. as a love addict, I've stayed in situations like that, believing that they loved me, but their actions was saying something, something completely different. different. Mm-hmm. And you were addicted to that, so and it became an obsession. So it was mm-hmm. like, Oh, I must conquer this right. This this right. I'm going to make him yep. change and see the light. Yeah. And, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, I mean, hey, kudos for you well, for, you. you know. Thank you. Yeah, just thank going. You. Just, just recognizing know, it and, and yeah. willing to do the work. Yeah, and it is And thank a you lot for, for sharing your story. Your, You're welcome. Yeah, your story. Yes. Yes. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for allowing me to do so. So, you know? where can people, you know, find help? You think um, for, well, um, it's called SLAA. Mm-hmm. And it's called Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous. Okay. Um, they have different locations. Um, I go all, to the is one. it all over? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's all, all over Georgia. In the U.S.? Mm-hmm. So even if you just go to any type of Alcoholics Anonymous, um, but you can research it online. It's mm-hmm. called SLAA if you want to go into um, some type of um, AA program, if you think you even qualify for it or not. Just go sit into one. Right. Um, because we have plenty of people that, that do that as well. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah it may be a thought and, may, yeah. and you may yeah. be thinking and maybe and you are. And there are several right. books out right. um, called Don't Call It Love. Um, which is really good. Um, again, I'm coming out with a book myself to talk about my story. Yes, um, love just it. so people can be aware. You know, I, I think a lot of people will be able to identify with my story. Right. And, you know, I'm, I never label anybody anything, mm-hmm. but I did have to come to terms with, and, you know, I say in, in my AA meetings, hi, my name is Kim. I'm codependent love addict. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. You know, so. I, I had to embrace that this is what I am yeah. and just learning how to deal with it. I have my good days and I have my bad days. Right. You know? so. I, I hear you. Yep. All right, well, thanks, guys. Kim, for coming on You're the show. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Anytime. And you have an Instagram that you want to shout out? Yes, yes. So I'm on, well, <laughs> I'm called Bodies, B-O-D-I-E-S, by Kim. And she has a bad body, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> fat right now <laughs> but thank you Girl, thank bye. you okay thank you. <laughs> if you do want to check out my um instagram page i will be also starting a podcast okay. um so once that get up and rolling i'll definitely share that with you guys so all right yeah, yeah. Awesome. i would love to come on and thank talk you more about yes it. most definitely yes. and it's going to be a his and her type thing so okay. we would love guests to come on yeah, yeah it'll be super fun awesome you know all right. Well, that concludes hair and whatever. Hair and whatever. Thanks, guys. Salon talk. That's right. <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs>